Imagine that you have to play one game for 12 hours per day, sometimes even more until your passion turns into a lifeless obligation. You have a very strict schedule, you don't have much free time, and you can only think of the game you play and the tactics and build orders you'll use next time. Training day and night, you are also aware that your hard work may never pay off, and after many years of trying to get good in StarCraft 2, you'll just retire as a no-name. A nobody who's spent a huge chunk of his life trying to become the next Maru or Serral, yet never even coming close to making a paycheck. In the peak of StarCraft 2, there were hundreds of players like this in South Korea. Faceless players who nobody knew. Duck Dog was one of them. He had a craving desire to become the next champion, but his results were a disaster. He entered the first GSL in 2010, but Love Rip, this was his first nickname, couldn't make it past the first opponent. Doing the best he can with the force field, but probably won't be enough in the end. Simply too many roaches. Too much. At the very least, he's going to get the Nexus. Realizes he'll get it anyway, so he moves most of his units onward. Going to come back and make sure. Wants to make sure he gets the Nexus. Nexus there does go down. And that is going to be enough for the cheat. But at least he was lucky with his team. Being a member of MVP, one of the top 5 Korean professional teams, he could at least have a good training ground for starting off his esports career. He also took part in many team league matches with different success. And as for his personal achievements, it was a lackluster performance most of the time. That would unfortunately become a pattern later. The Banshees alone will be able to kill these stalkers. He doesn't have enough resources to make anything. He can't make a probe because the Banshees will kill it. He can't make any more stalkers unless he makes probes. He doesn't have enough resources to make another probe. Yeah. This is all he's going to have. This is all he has. These the stalkers Benchies fall. Just won him the game. GG. GG finale is down. I think I'm the only one, but I had to say I like it. Finale's play today was, I have to say, disappointing, to be honest. He did great, though, I have to say. Okay, so oh, really he had a did. great showing. I'm sure we're going to see him again here. Stimming up the ramp now. Yeah, he played very well. GG. GG. You know, um, this guy over here, Finale, is gone, unfortunately. Uh, you can see kind of in a reflective state right now. So, in two years, the hero of our story became another faceless player. From inspiring new talent to that mediocre guy who can snatch off a map from somebody really good on tier 4 event where nobody really even cares about playing well. And I can't really blame Duck Dog for this. The competition in Korea was severe, it was too hard for most of the players. Even the talents like Beyond, for example, were struggling to achieve at least something in those times. In 2013, the original WCS system was introduced. And unlike in our times, you could play in one of three regions regardless of your citizenship. And since South Korea had an abundance of great players, less skillful ones choose to try other options. Duck Dog picked Europe and tried to qualify for the Challenger League. It was quite an easy task for him, but in Challenger he already met a small resistance, advanced from the second place to the Premier League, and now both the strongest European and Korean players awaited him in the first round. He faces Dimaga as his first opponent. Seems like a fair match, but goes not quite as expected. Just as in GSL, Duck Dog was outplayed quickly. This seems a very easy defense from Damaga, the Ukrainian defending his home turf against the Korean Duck Dog. Yeah, Duck Dog having a hard time breaking Damaga here. I mean, Damaga comes in very, very prepared into WCS, especially in comparison to uh, all the other tournaments. He takes this tournament very, very seriously, and Duck Dog is being shut down. He can't even really do too much damage at this third, I don't think. The Stalker's almost got a queen, but that was it. Everything else that's being lost is just Zerglings for. Re very expensive gateway units. There you go, GG. Yeah, I think that might happen as well. Not too bad force fields though. Did pin a lot of those units in, but in the end, there's some Zergling still sealed in there. Tries to recall oh. away the Mothership Core. Oh, it died. Yes, it died. No recall available. Oh. GG. <laughs> Clean and simple. Demaga says, <coughs> Europe region. <coughs> Europe region. However, he still got a second chance to advance, but the first map against Daishu looks terrible for him. And with a 0-3 score, Duck Dog is on the ropes again. One more mistake, and he'll be eliminated. His decision? He goes for a coin flip all-ins, hoping to at least win something. You can't compete with that! He's, he's gonna, gonna die! Oh my god, he's gonna die to a full gate. Oh my god. Well, Duck Duck, he's... <laughs> for all his givens, he's executing it well. You're a genius. <laughs>
<laughs> I should have believed in you from the start. Oh. Why didn't the bunker come down? The Widow Mine was not ready. He didn't believe a four gate would happen. I'm pretty sure he's like, all right, he's just going to expand. And now this can't be won from. The pylons inside the main base. If Ali, another hat if he wins from. Able to, to bring so much pressure and even warp on on the high ground. GG. Game number two goes to Duck Duck. Daishi's gonna come around and try to, you know, surround this Whoa. army, but there's three DTs. Yeah. And unfortunately, as he moves out, he Duck moves, Duck in. moves in. Yeah, those force fields go down as well, pinning a lot of that bio up against the Dark Templar with more than anything, instantly one-shotting some of these uh, uh, these Marines as they don't have combat shields and sealing some of them out as well. Duck Duck is on the verge of eliminating Daishi here in Group D, Incredible. a player that has been on the rise in the foreign scene, in the European scene for a long time, is being killed off by sheer aggressive ingenuity here from Duck Duck. Yeah, this, this scan goes down. There's too many DTs. There's too many stalkers here. And the, the reinforcements come in. And remember, the economy is 45 probes off two bases behind this. He just warps in again. Three DTs. What are you going to do? You have no energy. Okay, he's got one scan. But this, this time, he kind of spreads his DTs rather than just throws them into one scan. 67 supplies to 23. And hardly any units left. Oh, Challenger this. League is calling for the Frenchman. Daishi completely on the ropes, completely down and out. How can he even come back from something as severe as this? Duck Duck has made it so far with this aggression. Daishi's trying to hold on as best he can, but now Duck Duck, with the lead he has with charge going down, warps in a few zealots, along with annoyance of time warp if it was there as well. This He's going to have such a great army. Yeah, and two DTs make their way up now. There's no scan yet. There will be soon, but that's mules that aren't working. So these nine SVs are actually his income, as he can never, yeah. ever afford to, you know. He's sending his DTs one at a time. He's like, all right, I guess I can just pick the units off. And, you know, with one swipe from a DT, GG Duck Duck moves on to play against Demarge. Wouldn't have expected it. Would not have expected it here. Yeah. But Duck Duck... He, he stuck to his aggression, he stuck to his guns, and those guns eventually paid off for him. Yeah, the, uh, and he moves on, and now Damag is like, all right, <laughs> I'm going to challenge you, and we're going to fight, and I'm going to take my round 16 spot, which Damag is absolutely aiming for here. Despite that Duck Dog managed to eliminate Daishi, the community and the casters had very little faith in him. He seemed like an unpredictable, cheesy player who is looking for a surprise effect for each of his series, and now he had to play against Damag again, who already knew what he's up to. And the Queen's coming in, I don't see how Duck Duck's gonna do this. Yeah, Tamagus couldn't have come in from every single angle here if he's not careful. The Queen's as well to help this out. The Mutalisks actually fly on in. Not too bad time warps as well as the Force Field. It's gonna close off quite a lot of this, but the Mutalisks already focusing down on a ton of those sentries, killing those off, really limiting how much space control that Duck Duck actually has here. Well, actually, he's not doing too and bad whoa. here with Stork Guardian Shield and Stalkers. I thought this would be a lot Close to Marga's GG's. I messed that up, man. I thought he was going to crush that. Demaga in that All headlock. Right. There is one time up available. Demaga's at 165 supply. The warp prison. I mean, sorry, the, the mothership core goes down really fast. Next to the Colossus, being targeted down one by one. He's not going in too early. One Colossus down, the second one down as well. He needs to use the uh, the, the corruption on all the other units. Yeah, the corruptor's not going to be as useful as long uh, later on. Apart from the corruption, when those oh, go down, oh, good he gets caught fields. in a terrible spot there. Some of the roaches are on the right side, but it's not going to be enough as Duck Duck finds the best position to engage without the Colossi in the end. Demaga loses the entirety of his army to this amazingly strong Protoss force. And Demaga's hopes and dreams are continuing it. Fall down the toilet, Duck Duck takes the win. And this way, Duck Duck flies to Germany to take part in the next stage of the tournament. He also appears to be the youngest player here, and this is one of his rare one versus one offline moments. However, his group is rather tough, as he has to face Stefana and Lucifron two greatest StarCraft 2 players from Europe. As for the playstyle, Duck Dog was very risky. He enjoyed different gambles and all-ins that could surprise his opponents. It was indeed a good choice of strategy, because his rivals were much better in a standard game, and Protoss Race in general favored gimmicks more than a solid marker-oriented playstyle, at least in those times. So, how did the second group stage go? Stefano Fano is being dismantled here by Duck Duck. And there you go, GG. Duck Duck takes the first series 2 to 0. 저는 수비적인 걸 좋아하는데 가끔 어, 뜬금없는 타이밍에 
나가는 걸 굉장히 좋아해요. If his DPS is enough here, he lifts the Vikings, but there's not enough on the ground for Lucifron. Duck Duck is held. Duck Duck is holding. Hold. I mean, I didn't think that was possible. And in the end, he does. Duck Duck wins. 이번 WCS는 저번 시즌 우승자인 정종현 선수도 떨어지고 제가 우승할 수 있을 것 같아요. A couple of months ago, he was just a no-name. Now he's in top 8, looking forward to playing against Naniwa, one of the strongest non-Korean players. If he wins, he will have to face either Grubby or Vortex, which is not easier. However, PvP was also quite random and risky matchup in that balance patch, so it was very convenient for our Korean hero. Uh, I mean, this is not... Oh, wow, Tok Tok is going for it. He has an Archon actually moving while morphing. Well, this one auto is kind of squished against that force field. It's not going to get anywhere. Two mortals are in trouble as well. And now Tok Tok is in a superior position here. He's going to be able to focus down the natural. And as this falls down, Naniwa is in a bunch of trouble. 77 supply to 108. And Duck Duck has a third behind this as well. Duck Duck just, well, takes the game. We'll see if he can make the holders. Photon Overcharge is down, and Duck Duck goes in, targeting down the pylon. Now he focuses on the Void Ray, and well, the Void Ray is gone. And now the Phoenix is on left. Probes are coming off the line as well, and with continued reinforcements here, Duck Duck is looking in absolutely wonderful shape to pick up number three here. GG, Duck Duck takes a lead again. Is Naniwa in trouble? He must have Photon Overcharge by himself here. Oh! Oh, oh gosh, that was close. Starting to get a little bit stressed there, but the wow. Photon Overcharge is on, but the Mothership Core is dead. Naniwa is going to have to use two DTs in this situation. He's going to have to defend. 20 seconds from finishing. Oh, the gateways. Okay, he's got three pylons around them, though, but he does try it at uh, least. But the warping is forced, so Naniwa needs to corner boost gateways, but he's got only one. Oh, this is this is difficult for Naniwa. Remember, he's facing defeat here. Three games to one if he doesn't make the hold. And Naniwa proxy the pylon down the... Oh, okay. oh Naniwa just says GG, and Doug Doug takes the win and moves on to the semi-finals and will be playing at the Season 2 Finals. The next opponent is Grubby, a totally different kind of beast. Because unlike Naniwa, Grubby was known for favoring more safe options when picking a proper strategy, and Dugdo's past track was now public. You should expect a lot of cheese and Olins, and the fight between these two was really close. Usually you won't have time to feed back and then morph into an Archon before they get picked up, so yeah. it really depends. Well, the Phoenix fly in here, kill oh. off the Mothership Core instantly, and he's just gonna go straight for the engagement here, picking up some Stalkers, and Impulse Crystals is finished for Grubby here, so if he actually stays at range, he can easily do a lot of damage to Duck Duck right now. Yeah, same Look amount of that. Same amount of Phoenixes there, Grubby. We to some. Oh, this is a huge mistake about Grubby, why is he hugging those Phoenixes? He needs to bring his units here, and the Stalkers do come along as well, and he's actually gonna do quite a bit of damage once again, but it's been Phoenix for Phoenix right now, picking up some of these oh. ground units. He Grubby. actually picked up one of his Stalkers to save it, I think, there for a second second from the Zealots. Uh, but he's going to go for the engagement again. Still any impulse crystals done for Grubby and not for Duck Duck. And there you go, GG! Grubby takes game number one. He, he doesn't have any units at home, does Grubby? Once again, army supplies 18 oh. to 13 in favor of him. blocked. This Ooh. Oracle is going to do a lot of damage, but Grubby, I, I don't think he can hold at home. Well, Grubby's going to be supply blocked in just a second as well here if those stalkers have their way with the pylons. And they do kill off one. Another one just finished there. As good, well, it's good blink micro here by Duck Duck. Really saving his units and keeping those alive. And all the pylons depower all of these buildings. A scary position right now for Grubby as he tries to hold on for dear life, but that has so much firepower Duck Duck has. Yeah. I too many stalkers and uh, with blink here, if you just micro right, you, it's just gonna work every single time. GG! Game number two, tied up by Duck Duck. Grubby's catching up in army supply. Yeah, the army supplies. Actually, Grubby just pulled ahead on army supply here. Oh, he actually gets his zealous to the front here, but still the Archons for Duck Duck do threaten. And plus three weapons is gonna finish up in a little bit. If yeah. Grubby went now and tried to push this back, he would be in an all right position. But still, it's gonna be tense. Yeah, it's his tournament life uh, here. Also on the line, if he loses this game, uh, he will be down. Well, by one game, this will be pretty bad, so he's he's going to be patient for now. Oh, and he's actually just going to go straight for the engagement here. Those Immortals could kill off those cannons very, very quickly. That would be the per perfect, perfect point of focus there for them, as well as a lot of Grubby's army dying off here with the Archons all but gone. There's two left over to try and deal this damage that he needs to do. But the Zealots are over the other side trying to do the harassment. I don't think they're going to buy Grubby enough time. Duck Duck is powering on forwards once again here with such a strong immortal-based army and making it really hard for Grubby. 
especially with the expansion going down as well. Uh, this is this is going to be so hard. Even the Zealots here just whacking away at one of the Stalkers at the back. These Immortals just focus down the Nexus, realizing that oh, that's all he has to do, kills it off. The probes come off the line. Grubby right now, really, really up against it. And uh, Dug Dug looking phenomenal. Yeah, these Immortals, they, they did so much damage. We plus three attack of Briggs. You know, when behind, uh, you can try some crazy things that sometimes will work. Grubby does not want to leave any chance, anything to chance here. And he's going to try and just go for Conkey via Photon Overcharge. Those Void Rays, they're going to just charge on in. They actually charge up right now and actually just taking down that Colossus. Grubby is going to tie up the series here in 2-2. Two to two. And as he just ransacks the natural once again, what a turn of events here in the very last moment. The Nexus goes down. Grubby 94 supplied to 27. GG. He's going to keep on making units as soon as his photon overcharge ends. He's going to go for it, I think. If he doesn't think he can break it here... Oh, Stalker for Stalker. Again, the Stalker counts 12 to 7 with the Phoenix number in favor yeah. of Grubby, but... Keep in mind, Grubby doesn't have a proxy mm. pylon across the map, so he can't even send Dark Templars too quickly, but... Doc Doc, he doesn't have any detection. And the Stalker's here now with that Photon Overcharge going down. Going to try and move in here to do some damage to this Nexus. Every little moment this, this Nexus takes damage is one step further and further towards Duk Duk actually taking a huge, huge lead here. The Stalkers are amassing an hour of numbers here. The Dark Shrine is not done just yet. He picks up some more Stalkers here to try and hold this off. Zealous move forwards. He pulls off the probes as well. The Stalkers very, very high in counts here. 14 against 4. Duk Duk is doing so much damage. Ah, uh, Grubby is about to get... Uh, Dark Templars, but he doesn't have a pylon across the map. He's going to be able to defend there, but that's going to give enough time to Dog oh, to get detection. A great pick up there once again, killing off Stalker after Stalker. Not that many Phoenix left here. That Dark Templar warps in. That might be able to push this back, but the Nexus is almost certainly going to die. Dog just turns around and kills that off. He's chasing down the Stalkers as well. Grubby is in between a rock and a hard place. And behind this, Dog Dog starts an Oracle, starts a Robo Facility, kills off the Nexus. Dog Dog marching into the main here just to do whatever he can. Up. Potion overcharge, will it be enough? I don't think so. He, he can even just focus down the Nexus if he wants. He can focus down anything at this point, and he's going to do huge, huge damage as Dug Dug, killing off probe after probe. This final game, what an odd one. But now, Dug Dug here. Well, there's one Dark Templar moving across the map. And they was just going to move forward here, but the vision is provided. There you go, GG well played, and Dug Dug will advance on to the grand finals here. Grubby, gracious in defeat, but a huge, huge step forward here for MVP Duck Duck. It was a complete surprise, a new Cinderella story. Nobody in the whole world expected Duck Duck to get to the finals of WCS Europe, but he still had something to prove. Although, just like in all previous rounds, nobody believed Duck Duck would be able to outplay MC, the boss toss, one of the greatest players in the whole world. Everyone expected one-sided finals, but somehow they turned out to be really action-packed. This army that does generally clump up, time warp goes down, but uh, the army here for SKMC is huge! Good Storm hits the top of that army, as well as the second Storm here, and now uh, this isn't the best of favorable positions here from MC. Zealous charge forwards on the south here for Duk Duk, he's trying to even up these supplies, but there's still a lot of Immortals, it's gonna come down to Immortals and Immortals, uh, but Sarkons as well here. This is so close, but MC in the end is taking the advantage, taking that supply lead, powering through, whopping in Zealous at the back as well. He just needs those to get to the front, tank everything for him. And Dug Dug now, so down on supply. MC pushes forwards for victory. Oh man, this is more than just victory. GG. This is annihilation. That was absolutely fantastic from the boss toss. Oh. He's fighting, but that's a lot of units there for Dug Dug. That's a lot of Archons. Yeah, that is really, really, I mean, not only that, but it's also a bit of a difficult place for both players yeah. to engage here and well oh separating off some of this army oh. here MC losing these units every, he needs to retain absolutely every little unit he can Archon Immortal versus Archon Immortal better and, position for Dug Dug by far yeah he's he, look at his Archon spread so well in front of those Immortals tanking the damage they need to and moving on forwards Dug Dug here in game number two showing fantastic fantastic decision making yeah indeed he does GG Dug Dug picks up map number two
Two Zealots and however many Stalkers he's got, five. He can Stalk. win this fight. And if then he gets to the robotics facility as well to stop the Immortal, he's on top this of is it. where MC can do it. But he has to get there fast. He sees the Crota Boost on it and he's just going to go for the Stalkers initially here. He knows if he can kill those off, then the Immortal will have nothing to buffer for it. Only probes, in fact, uh, which is not exactly the best of trades here for Duck Duck. If it actually comes along, he still has his Mothership Coraline. Oh, it's blink. still alive. A great blink here. Catches another Stalker. A few Zealots are in a good position. Photon Overcharge goes down for Duck Duck as well to try and prevent this. But there's so many Stalkers right now. He goes for the Mothership uh -oh, Core. He's going to take it down. That Immortal's going to get a lot of damage down. Needs Zealous to hit it. Needs Zealous to be in there. And there they do. They get to it. And now Duck Duck is on the back foot. 15 are supplied to 31. Army supplies, 12 to 4. On the other side of the map, no. Duck Duck with balls of steel just warped in oh. two Zealots, man. He's going to get into that mineral line. He's going to get into that mineral line. He's going to try and do damage. I think he's already done damage in that mineral line. The probe count is low here for MC, who is forced to warp in Stalkers. And there you go. GG. Duck Duck realizes those Stalkers, too much to deal with. Two to one. Two to one. He has so much potential in his army right now. 52 army supply to 24. I actually just, MC just oh, loses straight out. Yeah, he's actually just dead. <laughs> like Duck Duck says, get out of the game, please. We gotta get, we were actually going to another game here. Yeah, it's going to be game five. <laughs> wow, Duck, again, I, I don't think I could have said it any better than a sledgehammer. There's, there's no way MC can hold this. It focuses down the Nexus, bye-bye Nexus. Stalkers at the back get hit by Zealots. MC. This was a disaster game. Well, just choosing to go over to that blink, it didn't work. It, like, uh, what was he doing with it? It didn't work. GG. Didn't do anything with it. Didn't do anything. Duck Duck says, nope, no 3-1 no for you. No three-map advantage where you have to win three games in a row. No, 2-2. Two, two. But I, I'm not sure if MC can break this. Duck Duck, are you going to be able to defend? I mean, he even has foot and overcharge, right? So yes. his army, his army with the second immortal as well. He's going to take this. Uh, good force fields, separate this army out for now, buying himself more time. There could even, if he keeps Look throwing down force fields there, he could have another immortal. Oh, MC oh. comes in, time war comes down. Stalker's attacking from the right-hand side. These force fields do come down. He blinks oh. forward. And this is the chance that he wants to do. He's going to try and break down these immortals. Kills off the sentries, denying any more force fields from actually occurring. Kills off one of the immortals. Will he take down? the second one. There's going to be a third one out here in just a little bit, but he kills off another one. Fortune Overcharge will hold him back. Duck Duck is doing this. The yeah. MC doesn't have that much. Oh, and the, the counter-attack. Counter oh, Duck Duck is just beautiful here with this counter-attack play. This is absolutely fantastic. Understanding what his opponent was doing. And we really can see the, the layers of strategy just on top of each other here. And... Uh, I don't think this MC can do it. He no. lost 600 resources to nothing before the fight even happened. And those force was a beautiful cutting off the Immortal from doing anything in this fight. We've said it all tournament long. This map, pretty good for force fields. And this is the first time that we properly see yeah. that come to fruition here. As Dug Dug once again just goes for the defense, realizing that he's ahead here in this regard. That Immortal will go down, but he still has a lot of firepower here. MC cannot break this location, even if he killed off all of that. Wow. There you go. GG, Duck Duck is one map away from claiming his first tournament victory of all time. If you aren't supporting Duck Duck right now, then don't even bother because that game was amazing. The boss toss is doing Whoa. it. He's chosen this time. This is the time. And it looks like he's actually going to go up to the third base here. Uh, and that's that's complete sacrifice. Oh, actually. Stalker's on the low ground. Got to be careful there. Yes, Link up to the high ground. Be. And he doesn't have energy for a MC's recall. got the Zealots all over the place to kill in the Nexus. Well, uh, engage. He needs oh. to fight properly. He certainly does. He picks up the Immortals with these remaining Phoenix here, trying to negate some of this damage. The, the Nexus does go down. And MC doing a lot of damage here. But he might lose a lot of his army in the process. There's four Immortals for Dug Dug behind this, doing oh, quite a this bit. Is, this is a perfect timing from MC. Absolutely perfect. He's getting in there. Oh, and now with the time warp down, the Immortals are not escaping. And the boss toss hits it beautifully. This small window of opportunity like a dart just smacking the bullseye. Perfect. Absolutely fantastic here for MC. Even the blink forwards. There you go, GG, tying up the series. Three to three. We are not done here just yet. And MC could be in trouble. He could be. Uh, there's a, there's a uh -oh. big counterattack coming, and this didn't work. He was supplied. Oh, no. Okay. Well, good force will come down. There's pilots inside oh, the main base. Oh. A probe gets in. This is disastrous for the boss toss. Duck Duck is here, and this uh -oh. didn't work. This didn't work. Duck Duck right now, uh, he's only just warping in his warp gates at the very back. He needs to warp in units, but these stalkers have breached. They've killed off the sentry. They're going to kill the stalker. MC's in trouble, man. It, uh, the Oracle's gone. Oh. The Oracle's gone. Is this, this is it. This is, is how this... Duck Duck's going to win. Uh, Duck Duck now warping in even more units here. All he has to do is micro. Uh, he know he has the advantage. He has the stalker. He's going to do it. MC GG. Duck Duck through Played 
played one hell of a tournament, I think is the best word to describe this. I don't think he believes it yet. I don't think he believes it. He's just won WCS Europe season two. He's just played a seven map final against SKMC in the round of eight, 3-1 versus Naniwa, 3-2 versus Grubby. He acknowledges who he just beat with the bow there, but it is Duck Duck from Team MVP. That is the WCS Europe Premier League season two champion. When he realizes it's over. And there we go. The mighty ducks in the background are going crazy. Really, just absolutely fantastic. What a what a terrific story. Someone who, like Wellmu, came through from the very beginning of the qualifiers through Challenger League into Premier. Your StarCraft II European champion is Duck Duck! <laughs> quack, quack. Duck Duck! <laughs> From being an unknown Korean player to becoming the champion of WCS, this was a great road and a Cinderella story. Duck Dog became the symbol of Korean resilience. He was not an incredibly talented player, nor was his playstyle really that good. Even though he was mostly a cheesy player, he was, however, indeed great at mind games and tricks. But that was of no importance. His energy and passion, this was a crucial contributing factor to his success. Later the same year, Duck Dog would try to repeat his brilliant results in Europe. However, the competition got harder and many players learned his cheeky playstyle. Despite that he never got to the finals again, he accumulated enough WCS points to get invited to the WCS Global Finals, where he could continue his story and perhaps even win the Global Finals. But the first round is a nightmare. He faces innovation, the best run player at that time. The only good thing for Duck Dog is that it's the first time they play against each other, so the turn player probably won't be that well prepared for the cheesy Protoss guy. Perhaps trying to create a fight out in the middle of the map, I'm not sure what he's thinking here. Oh my god, the flank coming! So many zealots will come crashing into these units and storm raining down on some of these marauders. Gee, gee! Duck Duck has upset innovation with a score of 3 to 2. Nobody believed in Duck Talk, and yet again he's in the next round now facing Maru. Unfortunately, it was the end of his run. But from a tier 3 player to one of the best Arc of 2 players in one year, that's hell of a career, I must say. And his matches on BlizzCon were full of desperate energy, which you can only find in those forgotten GSL Code players who are striving for success and recognition. But unlike many other pro players, Duck Dog's story wasn't going uphill since his last WCS victory. It was his one shot, one kill, and to be honest, he was not a great overall macro player and he didn't have any exceptional traits. He probably knew that too, his playstyle was too reliant on all-ins and he would have to put a lot of work into his future success. But his passion drove him forward, up until his WCS victory. And after that, according to himself, Duck Dog just grew tired of StarCraft 2 and started losing his passion towards esports. That was the end of his career but he still is remembered by the StarCraft 2 community. If you enjoyed this story, don't forget to check out this video. Have a good time, see you.